good to see you. Or Hendrik, uh, one of the key executives for the responsible for the huge success that Kia has been having in the U.S. in the past. I would, I would love to take credit for all of that. <laughs> well, I mean, you you are responsible for product planning. Thank you very much. So, I mean, it's your job, <laughs> all right? Yes. And then you have done a, a really good job. Lately, I mean, uh, number one in uh, initial quality study by JD Power that last was, year. That was, huge, that was huge for us. We, that was a, a big win for us. Yeah. Absolutely. Sales skill keep growing. We had, we're up about 3.6 uh, for uh, 2016 overall. Yeah. And um, so, and you're adding new cars and this is what we are here in San Antonio for. And first of all, thank you for bringing us to this city. This beautiful new hotel, this which is, uh, uh, it's really uh, coming around. This is uh, um, an icon in the city now, from what I understand. It's really amazing, and in an amazing place. It was used to be a brewery, and now they have kept some of the industrial part of it, like, um, make it in a luxury hotel, which is really really nice. We're here. We're here to drive and talk about cars, not hotels. Okay, that's right. So this is the new addition to the lineup. Uh, very important because this is part of your, what do you call it, green strategy? We are, it's our eco strategy. Eco strategy. We announced um, about a year ago that we're expanding uh, our lineup and revamping all of our powertrains to improve our fuel mileage about 25%. And that's not just here in the U.S. but globally. So it's a major initiative and it also includes 11 all new models. Yeah. Um, hydrogen, plug-in, uh, hybrid. Uh, hybrid by itself, so a lot of a lot of activity going on. This is and this is one of them. We we have the yeah. This is the number four, right? Well, we have uh, we announced the uh, the Optima hybrid and also the first version of our plug-in hybrid, the Optima plug-in hybrid. Uh, this is uh, the hybrid version of the 2017 Nero, and we have a plug-in version coming out at the end of the summer. Yeah. So those also are the, the uh, what about the um, Soul EV? And uh, the Soul EV already there. Uh, we've had that for a couple of years now, so it's uh, part of the por por portfolio overall. It's, it's so growing. with that, you're uh, you're uh, targeting to lower your emissions by 25% by that's, 2020. That's right. Improve fuel economy and also lower emissions. And uh, it's part of our slow move uh, away from uh, gasoline or yeah. fossil fuel powered. Uh, transportation which is where the industry is going right I mean like, uh, despite some people saying that they don't necessarily like it but that's what is gonna happen well, and right? I think you know this is a good example technology has advanced so much that it's basically transparent for a day in and day out use for most people I yeah. mean the improvement the mileage on this vehicle is 50 miles per gallon that's amazing and yeah. it, it feels like a normal car and that was kind of the point on the development of this is to really bring something new and fresh to the market you know for so long to get an echo car, you had to make a big trade off on design or handling, and this vehicle answers that. It handles and it performs just like a normal car. It looks and handles like a normal car. It's got a normal transmission with step gears. It was a, it's a is six that, speed it's, DCT. Is that the so. main difference in the in the handling? We drove it already all day today, and it really doesn't feel like the typical hybrid. Is the transmission the key element in that? There's two, th there's two things. Number one, this is a transmission. This is, uh, for us, the first time we've used, any, I think anybody's used a, we call it DCT or uh, a dual clutch dual transmission. Clutch, yeah. So it's basically a manual transmission that's automated. And because it has normal step gears, it feels like what most people have in their car today, which is a automatic transmission. It shifts gears when you throttle, when you give a throttle, it downshifts you need to, uh, and it feels like a normal car, which is kind of our point. Most hybrids today use uh, a CVT, which mm -hmm. is, you know, it, the engine rubs up and it feels like it's sluggish. We wanted to fix that and eliminate it. We heard from our consumers when we talked to them that they wanted something that feels and handles like a normal car. And the other advantage, I mean, you keep the low torque that it's immediately there with the That's electric right. engine yeah. right so this one's a six speed we have uh, DCTs in our Soul Turbo which we just announced but we also have it in our Optima uh, 1.6 those are seven speed this is a six speed and we did that because this has uh, obviously it's hybrid which means it runs on gasoline and it also has an electric uh, motor yeah. that drives it and because the electric motor has instant torque from the very very beginning we were able to uh, eliminate one of those gears save a little bit of weight 
uh, made the package smaller and made the vehicle more responsive with just six gears. And you adding this uh, model to the lineup as a crossover, which is the fastest growing uh, segment of the, in the industry. So that's going to re really be a, a really good thing for yourselves. Well, too, right? that was one of the main points on this vehicle was the design. Uh, what, penned right next door to our office in Irvine in our uh, California design studio. Uh, Mike Torpy, who also yeah. is uh, famous for the chief designer of the Soul, he also worked on this car. And our idea was to add some excitement and something uh, emotive to this space. You know, for so long you've had to make a trade-off and have like a boring, uh, kind of a mundane looking car that was completely optimized to aerodynamics. And because of that, you know, it was kind of a bland car. We wanted to answer that with something new and different, which is why we designed it in a crossover style. And uh, with the advantage of uh, being built on a platform that was designed to be a hybrid, that uh, allows you to gain a lot of space That's right. in the interior and like flat flat, uh, flat surfaces for cars. That's right. You know, part of the hybrid uh, equation is it has a battery. And in this case, uh, the battery is tucked underneath the rear seat. In a vehicle like this, you know, that's usually wasted space. Yeah. Uh, so we put the battery underneath the rear seat. That allows us to have a completely flat load floor. When you put the seats down, it's flat. Uh, there's no intrusion into the, into the uh, passenger footwell. Uh, there's also uh, great roominess. Uh, and because it's tucked away in a space that's not normally used. So very, very smart packaging. We we're also able to uh, make the vehicle, it's large, it's the interior volume of this is about 116 uh, cubic feet. Uh, our Optima midsize sedan is 120, so it's all basically the size of a midsize car in this. Yeah. And this sits uh, between what, the Rio and the Soul, more uh, or less? From a, from a positioning standpoint, it's between the Soul and the Sportage. Oh, the Soul so and the Sportage. Have, yeah, we have our, our uh, small, uh, iconic uh, city car, which is the Soul, and then we have our small CUV, which is the Sportage. This basically fits right in between those two. Yeah. Position similar to uh, uh, the Optima and pricing standpoint. So if a customer were to come in and look at this, it'd be similar to Optima and pricing. So talking about pricing, uh, three trims, I understand? There's a total of five. Oh, five. Yeah, uh, so we have the fifth one just for the first year. It's a launch edition, but we have, uh, oh, okay. we have our best fuel economy model, which is the FE model. It's 50 miles per gallon combined. We have an LX and an EX, those are 49 combined. And the one that we're driving today is our fully loaded model, we call it Touring. And that one gets 43 miles per gallon combined. What makes a difference? I mean, that's a significant difference in uh, mileage uh, among the trims. What, what, what makes that different? No, so we, give, uh, we want to give our customers choice. This one's fully loaded, it has uh, a sunroof, a great 315 watt uh, Harman Kardon sound system with an amplifier, uh, power windows, power locks, navigation system. 18-inch wheels, uh, 55 series 18-inch wheels, so it's a fairly large wheel okay, and a tire. So, that's weight. so it's basically it's the same reason that sports cars use uh, larger tires and wheels for better traction and better performance. Mm -hmm. uh, the downside of that is it uses uh, it's more friction, so it requires more fuel. Okay. And uh, but we also have versions that get 49 and 50 miles per gallon if the customer doesn't want that feature. So a lot of choice. And the prices, the price range goes from uh, 22 to 30. It right? starts just under 23,000, 22,890. And our top of the line model, this Touring, is uh, 29,850. Uh, that's without the 895 destination. So uh, fully equipped with all of the content, all of the safety gear, the navigation, uh, for under 31,000 dollars. And this, uh, this car, I mean, the hybrid segment is, I mean, the hybrid uh, type of car is uh, growing in every segment of the industry. This one competes against, what, the Prius B, I guess, the Ford C-Max? Well, it, uh, that's exactly right. I think for us, uh, also, we think that there's, uh, because it drives and feels like a normal car, we're expecting a lot of customers to also, who maybe are in a market with a compact car, uh, a small CV like an HRV or a Juke or some of these other cars, might be interested in this type of body style and very uh, interested in, in the great 50 miles per gallon. So I think yeah. those are big selling points for <laughs> even us. Though, even though gas is still cheap, I mean, that apparently is going to stay there for a while. I mean, that's a pretty attractive number. Right? Well, you know, if it's, uh, you know, you could drive uh, uh, a regular SUV or a pickup and get uh, 20, 25 miles per gallon, uh, but you're stopping every week to get yeah. your tank. I mean, for someone who drives that same distance, maybe they only stop every other week or maybe once a month. Well, here's that real example of what that mileage is. When we started, I saw uh, the cluster here, it gave us a range of 490 miles right. with a full tank. And we have driven, according to this, 132. 
and we still have 331. That's a lot. It's a yeah. Oh, so I think for a lot of people, instead of going once a week for gas, maybe you go once every three weeks for gas. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. And by the way, this car also has, I mean, a lot of safety technology, but also has technology that it's a link between the GPS and the engine and transmission. That, that's exactly right. That so tells you something to teach is, you how to drive. This almost? is our this is our latest technology. The the map data that's in the navigation system now has elevation, so it's able to see not only north, south, east, and west, but also uh, sea level, 400, you know, wherever you're, and it can see down to whether there's a hill in front of you or not, and it'll help you coast to save fuel and to have the vehicle run more in the electric mode. Uh, if it foresees that there's a hill coming up, it'll tell you you need to coast down it, you know, stay off the, the throttle and just coast. Also, if you have your destination programmed in a navigation system, it will aggressively use as much as possible the battery so that you're okay. using the battery instead of the gasoline, knowing that there's a, a downhill on the backside where it can recharge itself. So it's smart enough to know how to actually plan the most efficient and economical route for your destination, which is really cool technology. Honestly, I only heard about that kind of technology in a Rolls Royce before, <laughs> yeah. no, and, and so that's I, true. Yeah, I think, and, uh, I think some of the uh, BMWs had it from uh, yeah. a couple years ago. The 7 Series had that. We're bringing it. Uh, we're bringing it to our vehicle too. So, really excited about it. It's a great looking car, uh, and I think it's a great new solution for buyers who want a CUV that gets 50 miles per gallon, and it looks great, and it's a roomy interior, and high quality and, it, and it's just uh, we're really excited about bringing it to uh, I'm tomorrow. sure I'm sure a lot of people are gonna take a look at a, a different way to hybrids because this is I mean the technology is amazing but it really looks like a normal car and it drives really great it's new it's different and it feels like a normal car uh, and that's kind of the whole point is it doesn't look different yeah. but it gets great mileage and then staying with a uh, pricing philosophy of uh, Kia I mean a great value it's is great I mean look at the content that's in this yeah. under thirty thousand dollars it's an amazing package and for us it's uh, really been part of our DNA it's one of our strong points is to bring a great value to the market okay so from here to 2020 which is uh, three and a half years more or less right seven more cars uh, worldwide in, globally, oh, so globally. We're, yeah, we'll send some to China we have a couple of domestics we have uh, one uh, one in Europe and we have some more announcements coming for North America. So you're Stay be busy. Tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, great to see Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's a hybrid. We're stopped. The the engine is still running, but we have to turn it off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.